Hello there. So, Miss Kiss, nice Halloween outfit. It is amazing. What I wanted to do today is to try to guess your favorite roller coaster. So I'm going to just start listing them. I think your favorite is Fahrenheit. No? Candemonium? No? Super Duper Looper. Skyrush? Yes, Skyrush. Wow, I didn't know you liked thrills like that. <laughs> Have a great Halloween. Thank you. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Hershey Park, here for Hershey Park in the Dark. It was sadly a short run event. I thought that it would be starting a little bit earlier, but eventually I got here, thankfully the day before Halloween. And I already met Kiss, as you saw. Can't believe her favorite roller coaster is Skyrush. I didn't know she did it like that. But anyway, I uh, started a little bit late here uh, because the wait times were a little bit light when I first got here, but then that quickly changed. So to start off, I immediately went over to Storm Runner and did that so many times until I felt like I needed to take a break. Recovered from that, headed on over to Skyrush and kind of did the same thing. And then when I went to go check the app, which has been so-so uh, on accurate wait times, Candemonium was at a 120 minute wait and that was around 3 p.m. or no, around 4 p.m. So that was around the time I stopped, I got food, settled down, <laughs> calmed down. I think I did most of my coaster running unless there's a low wait time that I can uh, find during the course of the event. But anyway, I invite you to come along. Let's go check out Hershey Park in the dark. So you're a mad scientist, right? Yes? Okay. So I'd like to guess your favorite roller coaster here, Mr. Mad Scientist Hershey. Is it Skyrush? No. Great Bear? Mm, no. Am I getting closer? Super Duper Looper? That one? Super Duper Looper, a classic. Amazing. Uh, I think I'd like to get one of those high fives that you've been ha handing out. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great Halloween. <laughs> so just from where they're doing the meet and greets, which is marked in the app as a carousel, although I think it's a holdover from when the carousel was still in here. It looks like there's a stage here for some show that starts around 8.30. But I think we're going to start making our way all the way back to the end of the park, going this way towards Laugh Track and Lightning Racer. One thing I started noticing uh, since... Mr. Hershey brought it up. Super Duper Looper. It looks like it got a little bit of a paint job. I think it was just on the loop though. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But it seems like there's a theme going on. And when I went to go eat, um, one of the employees, because I inquired about uh, the boomerang here being painted green instead of it's black that it's been for a while. It looks like they're going for a theme there where they're trying to do more candy colors on the roller coasters, which I thought was interesting. Making my way up the hill here, I just wanted to point out Reese's Cup Fusion. Doesn't look like it's quite a two hour wait, but they are using the switchbacks that are just on the other side of that wall. And then up above here for the monorail, it looks like at least a three train wait, which is a decent amount of time. So I wanted to take a step back and talk about Storm Runner a little bit, since I did get to ride on almost every row there. The front row is just where it's at, in my opinion. It's a little rattly in the back, even though you do get more of an intense experience. The rattle kind of overshadows it a little bit, unfortunately. But Logan. in general, the uh, experience is kind of similar all throughout, except the front, obviously, you get the view. It's just a lot more fun in terms of the smoothness, uh, but you do miss out on a little bit of airtime. Just something I'm pointing out here, I believe that this used to be in use for Hershey Park in the dark, but I guess just not this year. One thing I'm kind of bummed is not open is Burks here because I do have some coaster themed dogs like Fahrenheit, Wild Mouse, and Great Bear. I think Great Bear was my favorite here. You can see it's got chili, cheese, and bacon bits, but uh, I kind of stay away from jalapeno peppers, so Fahrenheit I didn't go for. But the Wild Mouse was really awesome just because of all that cheese. So it looks like unfortunately Fahrenheit has ballooned up to a 75 minute wait, which super stinks. I would have loved to have gotten on this one, but I believe just because of the throughput of this ride, uh, I think the train is about to come out so you can see there's very few cars on here. So unfortunately, the throughput is minimal. Yeah, that's about it. That's all they got. So if you want to get on this, you have to get here kind of early. Looks like right now Treatville is a little slam. There's a line going up all the way down to Sidewinder. So I figured since I mentioned Sidewinder, we'd come and visit it. And as you can see, it is a very vibrant green now as opposed to the black that it was before. You can see some bits of it that are still black, like all the way back there. The track is still black back there, but the majority of it is going to be candy colored, as I mentioned. I'm not sure what candy they're going for. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably like a Jolly Rancher color. I think we're going to have to come back and circle back to Treatville because that line is by Sidewinder. It's crazy. 
Uh, so we're going to keep going on down this way, but I wanted to circle back and talk about Sky Rush because I did get to ride it uh, somewhere between like eight and nine times, and I still think the back left seat is superior to all the others. It is just insane. It's running really great, in my opinion. But yeah, that that is close to like a near perfectly intense ride. It's like just a little, what's the word? Like it's intense, but it's almost too intense, but just barely. And that's what I love about it. It's so great. Just beyond all the free goodies that are being given out here, this appears to be Treatville. Like these are people going through Treatville. It's just completely backed up into its own little type of parade. Well, that stinks because they only allow children under 12 to get candy. So I wouldn't any get, get any candy on here. The only real reason I would go is for the scavenger hunt and on the hopes that there is a character or two in this experience, just like there was last time. I turned around and noticed that Fahrenheit was looking really pretty in the sunset. And then just beyond that in this path, we have some legit fog here making this look super creepy. But I don't hear any music in this area. I feel like it could use it. Well, here is the exit now to the treat mill. And it looks like they locked behind all of that. A couple of photo ops. I see way back there that little Hershey Kiss car that used to be parked in front of Chocolate World. Uh, that's unfortunate. I guess I'm going to have to go through this just to see what it's all about. But I did ask one of the performers here or one of the workers here. And they said that there are no characters in Treatville. So sad to say that. Where do we find the characters then? I'm walking up this road here, you can hear the Monster Mash, I'm sure. Which reminds me, they aren't doing any sort of dance party with the monsters right now, are they? That's something I missed from 2019. But they do have this big photo op area here. So we finally made it here in front of Laugh Track. And although, yes, this building is beautifully lit and it looks amazing. This line is currently at a 90 minute wait. And there is no way I would want to wait 90 minutes for this ride. It is in the dark right now, and it's just kind of creepy clowns laughing while you ride this coaster in the dark, but you don't really spin on it, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think it's a strong roller coaster, but it is unique because you do get to ride it in the dark. But anyway, pointing that out because I was super curious to see the spectacle of this line. It's brutal. I spotted from the entrance of the laugh track how cool the Ferris wheel here is looking. That lighting is just spectacular. Well, there's currently a very, very large line for the Ferris wheel. I can't go on it by myself anyway. Even if I recruited a friend, that is a long line. But just check out this pattern with the purple and green. I think it looks so cool. So sadly, it looks like Lightning Racer is at about a 35 or 45 minute wait. Uh, the app is saying 30, but that's definitely not a 30 minute wait. Uh, so we're going to backtrack a little bit. Let's check out how Treatville is doing. I am not quite sure what to make of this fog. I can't see a thing. This is amazing. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about why they wouldn't have characters. Maybe that'll hold up Treatville a little too long, you know, hold up the crowds because there's so many people there. If they added characters on top of that, it would just hold the whole thing up. So I made my way into Treatville and it is really nicely decorated right at the entrance here. I love this combination of purple and orange. As you can see, it is very, very busy here, super backed up. Since I'm not trick-or-treating, I'm just gonna sneak on ahead here. Coming up on the second trick-or-treat stop, we have a scarecrow handing out candy. Here comes the third trick-or-treat stop. We have a nice little old clown handing out the candy here, right next to Rita's. Another trick-or-treat stop here, right in front of the Hershey character's Cauldron of Glow. The Scarecrow Salon is what they're calling it. That's fun. I've lost count of how many stops we've made it to, but I think this might be number five. Alongside the fence here, they have a bunch of <laughs> these painted here. I don't, I don't know what to make of that, but that's fun. And then some lights. Okay. All right. Over here, spider. And then it just sort of opens up. Oh, and a couple more photo ops with the characters. Another fun photo op. This is saying it's, what does that say? Shake your bones and glow? Oh my goodness. I don't want my bones to glow. That sounds unhealthy. So this is where they moved the Kissmobile to, unfortunately. So you'd have to go through the Treatville if you would like to get the photo op with it. And we've come towards the end here. I believe this is treat stop number seven. If I remember right, I don't know. It could be 10, it could be treat stop number 400. I don't know. I've lost track. And then I believe the scavenger hunt you would give over here to Renewal by Anderson. So now we can say we officially conquered Treatville. And honestly, unless you're in it for the candy, there's not really any reason to go, unless you really want that Kissmobile photo op. 
So unfortunately, there's that. I'm shocked, surprised that there are no shows whatsoever. They have an auditorium here, don't they? I don't know, but yeah, they, they need some sort of people eater like that, like a show that forces everybody to sit down for like 30 minutes or so, because these walkways are slammed. The amount of people waiting for crab fi fries and Chick-fil-A is insane. It's, oh man, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. Uh, definitely missing the dance party, I think I already mentioned that. And the other thing that's happening tonight that I definitely want to do is a night ride on Candemonium with all the lights out. So here it is. I remember there being a theater. I just can't remember them ever having used it while I've been visiting. And that's been since like 2017. So here's the Music Box Theater. Sure enough, why couldn't they throw a show in here? I don't know, maybe because of COVID? Maybe because of budgets? I think I made a mistake coming back here in the Skyrush pathway. Because holy smokes, it's dark and creepy back here. Very fitting for the evening, though. So I'm here in front of Skyrush, which was whizzing by when I was walking through the path, and I didn't know that this went down and then just reopened, so there's little to no line right now, and I think I have a hankering for a night ride on this. As you can probably see, the fog is really here. Great Bear is currently going right by. I got to go on Skyrush a bunch of times because I guess nobody knew that it had reopened. Oh my gosh. This ride, man, this roller coaster. I gotta bump it up in my personal rankings here because there's just really like some, I, everybody was waiting for the back row. So I grabbed the second to last and I went on outside right, outside left and it was just, it was perfection. I love the way that you feel like you're gonna get flung out on the first drop there. Uh, there is one really painful part. Towards the end, there's like one small hump that just kind of drives your thighs into the restraints, which I'm not a fan of. And it's somewhere towards the end, whatever it is. But the one where you go off access, that little element right there is so ridiculous. It's like it just wants to dump you. It feels like the, it just wants you off the ride. It just wants to launch you somewhere. Oh my gosh, amazing. But I need to take a break now because whew, my blood pressure spiked from that. And you all know I have to be careful. But this ride of all things was the first one that I rode after my surgery, believe it or not. Uh, so the last thing that's on my agenda is a night ride on Candemonium. And I still think there's like a half hour left. So we're gonna check out, I believe some sort of show that's happening where the carousel used to be. So that dance party was a lot of fun, but unfortunately they do it at 8.30 and I'm guessing until the park closes, I dipped about 10 minutes before it ended because we need to get our night ride on Candemonium. Well, I managed to get on the second or third to last train of the night. Thank goodness for that because it was amazing. Back row on the left, so much air, so much air time, so much floating. It was, it was epic. I didn't realize how much air time there was before you go into the turn that goes around the Hershey Kiss Fountain. That was phenomenal. I don't know if it was going a little bit faster than usual. I just don't remember the airtime being as pronounced as this, but it is just, it is such a good ride. Oh man. And uh, I was on the Reese's train and yeah, what a night. It was, it was great. The afternoon was just Storm Runner, Storm Runner. A whole bunch of uh, Sky Rush with some great bear. Um, explored around, Treatville was so-so. The uh, dance party was pretty epic. I do wish, um, I just, I have to mention that the time in 2019 I got to meet Milk Dud and just nothing has topped that. Icebreakers was kind of like a consolation prize, but sadly, I have not seen Milk Dud since 2019. So one day, hopefully, I will be reunited because I'm a big fan, he, he's, he's great. He uh, had me cracking up and I still have a photo of him that I, I, I need to put up on the internet somewhere. But anyway guys, Hershey Park in the dark was great. I, I had a lot of fun, but I know that Candy Cane Lane is even more impressive because of all the lights and things that they have going on. So I'm looking forward to that and that's probably the next time that I'll be back. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time and I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye.